Hello, it's Jesse here and welcome back to Jesse's Vintage Garage and we're going to be working on the clutch some more on this Triumph Trident. Uh, we're going to work on doing the next part where we actually work on figuring out the run out with the cush drive because you have to do all that with all together and then we're going to work on the cush, the cush unit in this video. Uh, we're going to replace the rubbers and everything. So and then First off, let's uh, we're gonna take this piece, assemble the clutch and the cush drive all together, and the inner inner primary cover as a group, and we'll go on to doing the the runout test. We have the cush drive assembled inside this inner and outer primary here on the on the vise, so it's ready for us to do our runout test. Um, we got it sitting in the soft jaws so we don't damage this, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the clutch here, we're going to run it through, tighten it down, and then we'll set up this dial indicator here so we can do a runout test. We have six different, uh, six different six different settings here to test to find our best spot. So let's see what happens here. So seeing as how I got these clutches laying here, I thought I'd talk about something real quick that we kind of didn't really go into detail on, but. So the clutch assembly that we got out of the, out of the Trident, uh, we don't know if it's original or not, because um, a lot of different signs made it, us think that it was been has been worked on. But later 74s, which this is a late 74, has this style of uh, crown unit that's on the clutch. Um, some people call it a crown because it looks like a, you know, it's shaped like a crown. We didn't talk about that, but it's okay. Um, but what I'm talking about is is it's got a step here and this is where the ring gear gets pressed on in 75 electric starter when it came out so they were already starting to transition because a lot of things changed throughout the years throughout the months and weeks when they were making the tridents kind of from what we read or have read before the one we had got of course the guts aren't in it right now because we're messing with it but it's an older one it doesn't have that step for the ring gear so we have seen people or know of people that have converted their 74s and alders just by changing out this cover that we've taken out. And you might have to you might have to machine this down a little bit to where it, it's just enough to press on the gear. I, it, it might be correct. Uh, we wouldn't know unless we had a ring gear. And we've never done any kind of conversion like that. So. But. I just was going to throw that out there because it, it ha it's possible. I've that is what they're getting ready for. And that's why this tapers here, too. So when the starter spins, the gear doesn't come into con it doesn't get in the way of this taper. This uh, angled edge here you're talking because about. Because the gear would spin right through here on the gear, uh, ring gear. So anyway, we're going to go do a run-out test on this, on this clutch here and see what we got. See what we got it at. So let's go do that quick. Okay, so we're getting ready to put the clutch assembly in here now, and we're going to do some runout tests and see where we can, how many times we got to do it till we can find our, our sweet spot, let's call it, where it's the, the most less part of runout that we can accomplish here. washer and this and you got to tighten it because there's play if you don't tighten it Right, we'll get this dial indicator set up here. Let's 
So when the clutch spins around on that, on that edge, we're gonna watch this needle jump and stuff. And we don't want it to move a whole lot. So find zero first. Well, I got run it to the furthest. Oh, the fur. Okay, the furthest. Fifteen thousandths. All That's right. not going to work. Okay. All right, then we'll just keep moving around until we find it. Let's go ahead and try to move it to a different spot. So instead of boring you with us switching it out until we found our sweet spot, we're now on our sixth try, and we believe we got our best, our best uh, spot here. So as we spin it, we can see on the indicator here. It's not 15 no more. It's only moving about four. Yeah. Yep. Four. That's four. So this is, this is good. I mean, we can run it this way. Oh yeah. Under six. It's on okay. four. Four is perfect. Okay. We tried all six splines and this is the best one. We put it back. We marked it. So now we should be able to take this apart and assemble the bike with this and we'll have four thousandths run on it. And we so. got, we made sure we marked it in there, of course, where we know where our spot is. So when we take this all back apart, we don't lose it. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So we just did a like a little assembly run here. We left the inner cover out, and we installed the clutch, and we put the inner primary cover in. We put the the cush drive in, and then we installed the outer cover just so we could see if. There is a sort of a binding issue when we go to rotate the clutch assembly here. Alignment. It's all like a, yeah, like an alignment issue. Um, this thing moves really nice and smooth, but we have to work on the clutch yet because remember we're like about six, six thousandths off. Is that what you were reading, saying? Yeah, well, we can't, well, yeah, that's as good as it's going to get. So, this well, we're going to, we got to put the new bearing and all that stuff in. So, all this really tells us that we, we verified that there was alignment is straight and true and there isn't something weird like the main shaft bent or bearings not right because if this is off if this is crooked at all it could be a, how it how they manufactured it see what i was worried about is the inner where the bearing is and this outer one where the bearing is if if they if the machining process was off let's say this way on this one and this way on the other one you bolt it all together and it's rough or if they're both off this way it's trying to make that hub and the clutch a universal joint <laughs> and yeah. you can't do that something wore those teeth completely out now i don't know how many miles it took to do that i have no idea and i don't know if it's because you know, somebody took it apart and did work to it and didn't realize that you had to align the, the cush drive and this and find the closest run out. If people don't know about the run out and they just take it apart, fix something and put it back together, chances are, because there's one spot where it's over 20 thousandths. Well, that's a lot. And if 20 thousandths is running on here that could have took out the teeth but I just want to make sure that I didn't turn it a half a turn and it got real tight and I don't feel that I, I it feels really good yeah we so, also made like a gap here where the gasket would like kind of be at so we know that it's like the right spot where the bearings sitting in the right spot yeah, that we run as well we run feeler gauges around it. it's the same it's the same thickness. I didn't want to put my new gasket in there. So, well, we feel pretty good about this because this thing's really smooth. And it's got alignment dowels anyway to hold this thing nice and nice and, you know, it can't be let up or down or in or out. It's got to be in the right lot. Yeah, so now we're going to take this all back apart and go work on the clutch. We got to replace that bearing in there, the pull rod bearing, and then uh, put yeah. new seals in both of these covers yep. and right put it together okay we got our Van Hill clutch cable and uh, it come with a real nice 
piece at the end all built in that's got a nice long sleeve so it doesn't move and it's really sturdy unlike um, the leather one we had unlike which... the other one really loose and i truly believe that that other one was not a trident cable i think it it looks like a norton cable actually um but we could only get like about 22 thousandths on the clutch handle when we pulled it up and we, we just couldn't get it to release now with this clutch cable i got this real free and i got jiggle here which is what they you know it's probably more they say you can make this to where it's it just snug and turns but i got it really free and i got a little bit of play up here in the handle which is typically what you want to do now i'm going to put this on here and i'm going to show you the kind of what i actually ended up with Okay, so what I got here is I'm going to put it in gear and there we go. Okay, so when I pull this clutch now, when I pull this clutch handle, I actually got 31 thousands. I'm so impressed with this. And when I do this, my clutch is free. I can spin the rear wheel. Clutch is released completely. And it's back to zero. And yeah, we had a good time getting it before that. I couldn't get it past 22 with the other cable. And it would never release. It was always dragging. I truly believe that that is what took this bike off the road. Because they put the wrong cable in it. And then in order for it to release, they had to tighten and tighten and tighten up here on the handlebar and tighten down here to where they could get it to release. Well, the problem with that is then the pull rod's pulling on the bearing 100% of the time and pulling on here 100% of the time, and it wore that bearing out. Plus, they had an old-style bearing in there. Now, I got this bearing from Triples Unlimited, and it is a flat bear, uh, ball bearing with two separate races and a ring that goes around the outside and a special nut that comes with it. So it's made to squeeze together. And it, it, it works differently than the bearing that I took out. Yeah. The bearing I took out is this bearing. And all that is, is a roller bearing. It's made to spin this way, and it is really rough. And the reason that this bearing doesn't work well is because you're putting side load on it. And then after a while, you get 5, 10, 15 thousandths in, in this, going in, in and out like this, because these balls are running in a race centered into this part, and centered into that part and it don't take long for it to wear loose now this bearing jiggles and so and these bearings lay differently uh, like here you can't you can't see it now here on the other ball I wish I had it apart right now I'd show you and maybe later when we go to assemble this the right way yeah, it's not assembled right yeah it's not assembled right <laughs> so, we got to tear it all apart we got to put yeah. the other piece in here I wasn't going to put this all together till I had a functioning clutch. I have a functioning clutch. Now we got to take the clutch apart and we got to put the locking tabs in. And I got a linear bearing to go inside the pressure plate. That's going to get replaced too. Yeah, we'll go over that. And so that's the next step because now that I've got 31 thousandths of clutch, I am 
or almost 32 thousandths, I get wonderful release. In fact, this clutch releases at 25 thousandths, and I got the run out to be 4 thousandths, and well, it's almost four. It's out, actually, it's almost three, a little over three. And so I think the run out is just beautiful on this. So I'm real impressed. I'm ready. I'm ready for the next step. So now we're going to be taking this off of here because it's just sitting here. And um, we're going to disassemble that and we're going to, we're going to move on. We're going to, we're going to put this all together and get it done. Yep. So it's quite the engineered machine yeah. piece of work here. Yeah, this was no easy thing to get this all sorted out. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of things done to this bike before I got it. And, of course, nobody could answer nothing about it because nobody knew nothing about it. So I had to uncover everything that was wrong, and it took a while. And like I say, I bought a bunch of new bearings. I bought, you know, we got a new clutch in it. Yeah, they make an upgrade for the ramp, too. Yeah. Uh... Well, I did that, too. And I'll show you that, too. There, There's a, there's a three-piece ramp. A three-ball ramp that's fixed in the back of a plate. Here's a used one. And there's a pin in this case, in the middle case. No, in the outer case, right here. And it sits in here like this, okay? It sits like, it sits in there like this. Right, okay. Okay. Now, it's been, it's been documented that you cut a new groove just like this about, I don't, I don't remember the exact degrees, but it's about from center of here to center of there, eighth inch further. So what you do is you rotate this. You rotate it clockwise. I think it's 15 degrees. And you rotate it. So what that does is it moves the ball out of a dead zone down here in the big fat hole. And it moves it moves the ball to be this lever down, down lower. And it puts... It puts the one, the one is going to be in one area and this one's going to be retarded just a, or advanced just a little bit. And then when you pull the clutch cable, it pulls out. It's already going in the ramp then by then. Yes. So it's already setting up on the ramp. So between putting the clutch cable in and me advancing this 15 degrees, um, I got a win-win on this clutch, I got to tell you. That and the new bearing here on the end, I don't have the one inside there, and that might only even make it better yet. And so I'm real excited about this. I think that's going to be, a, and the clutch is real easy to use. Um, so I'm just... I'm just real happy about it right now. Sweet. Well, we're going to work on taking this all apart, and then... Working on upgrading that bearing and the and the clutch back there, and then putting it all back together here coming up. So yeah, we got to put the rubbers inside the oh yeah inside the uh, cush drive the cush drive too. I got it all. We just haven't done it yet. It's we got hung up on getting the clutch to work. So yeah. So we're messing around with the clutch yet here on here on the Trident, and we still have our uh, our clearance here, and we. We're able. You saw that we had 30 just a little bit ago in the in the video, just in front of this, just before this moment here. But we to swapped the, out the um, to the original. We swapped out the clutch, actual clutch handle. Um, what we ended up doing, we're going to show you the difference here. But we end up having a Norton style lever with the perch on here. This is and then and this is what was on there. This is the Norton style one. Yeah, it's the Norton 850. And uh, this is actually the Trident one that was with the bike. What they came with the bike. Okay, so what I'm trying to explain is, we ended up with more leverage and more pull with the Norton one because the holes are about a half a hole different in distance. We'll take this apart and show you. But we have it set up back where the Trident was originally, and we go to pull the clutch. And we got it at zero clearance right now. Yeah. You can see so, yeah, if zero. I move this a little bit, the needle starts moving right away. 
Right. So then when he pulls it, it only goes up to... All the way to, to the deal. It only goes to 20. Uh, about 20, 21. Yeah, 20. Uh, well, a little over 20. And well, it's actually not on zero. Oh, I guess it wasn't, but you'll be at 20 now. Is that zero? Looks pretty under zero. There we there go. So when he pulls it, it goes to 20. But when we're at 20, we don't have any, uh, it's not released. It won't release. It won't release. So when we swap it out and put the Norton style clutch handle on and perch, we, uh, we get a full 30, which is a little bit beyond what we need. And it's enough to, I don't know, enough to be, release it. Enough to release. <clears throat> so anyway like on this lever and perch he's pulling them apart right here now but we'll show you the distance difference and it might be just what we need for this trident well, that's what we're going to use <laughs> I kind of like both levers, or they're kind of neat looking. Both of them are their own way. I like the solid aluminum ones that the Nortons have, and the Triumph ones are just kind of old, uh, you know, stamped steel and neat too in their own way. But if this is going to work better, then we should probably run what's going to work better. Okay, okay, here it goes. Let me put this back in here and hook up the cable again. Nothing else has changed. First off, I can't get that in there unless I help it a little. Then you go back to your free play. Okay, so I got a little bit of free play. Okay. And I'm on zero. Yeah. Like 29 when you pull it. No, 30. 30. Yeah, it's right at 30, I guess. Yep. There. Is that zero? Try again. I'm trying to get it set at zero again. Okay, there we go. about 28 close to 30 so anyways it's working way better because when that happens we actually have complete release and we can there it is. yeah see there it goes yeah so yeah like I said we're gonna run that there so you know if I zero this out Yeah, 31. Okay, 31 to 32 almost. There it is. There we go. Yep, 31. All right. I got play up here in the hand. See, I still got, I got play in the cable. Yep. And the nut is real free. So we should be good to go. This yeah. is, this is how I'm going to run it. Now we will show you what the difference is between these two handles. <clears throat> It's like we got another one laying here. This is another Norton handle. And what the, we're it's talking identical to this one that's in here. What we're talking about is we got the pivot hole here, and then this is the, the force to pull. My, the pivot. my theory. Actually, that's the pivot. I mean, my theory is they drill, they drilled this hole too high, 
this hole should be way down here, about a half a hole deeper. Because when you set these on top of each other, like this, and you look through the hole, the bottom hole, no, look through the bottom hole. I'm trying to, yeah, there you go. There you go. It's a half a hole off. And if you put a caliper on it and measure it, this is about one and a sixteenth of an inch, and this is three quarters. Wow, yeah. That's the difference. So the amount of the amount of of, of pull on the cable is a lot less with this handle. Right. I could have I could have not used this perch and could have just put the Norton handle into this perch and it works just as good. But I like this perch better because it gives you more advantage when you pull because it's pulled forward. And so you don't have to have this way up here for in order for that this to sit in the same spot, see? Oh, yeah. So I didn't want this big gap between here and here like you have to do. Or otherwise, if you have it way back there, your hand's trying to pull way up here instead of out here because you got more mechanical advantage pulling out towards the end. So, ah, sweet. So after all that, you just seen with the, the clutch and the, the run out test and which is a necessity, you have to make sure you get the run out and you have to put the two, the, the cush drive and this together to get that. That's something you can't forget because it's part of the process of getting this clutch to work. So, um, we're ready to put the bearing in and we've got this to come out to what we were saying it was 22 thousands. But the only reason I messed with it some more is I had it at 25. It would release, but I decided that I would take the cover off and I would move that spring because there's, there's like an infinite amounts of places you can move it. So I moved it like three times and I found a spot where it actually releases it starts to release the paper at 20 thousands by 22 they're fully released so that's even better so I marked the spring and when we take it apart to put the bearing in I'll show you what I did and um, it's working really good now um, I got I got the it's set at zero right now there's 10 There's 20. See here, I got release already. You know, that one's a little bit snugger. This one's a little bit snugger, but it's, it's releasing. By 22, by 22, they're, they're all free. I could take them all out and it'd be done. So, and I got... 30 to 31 thousandths pull on the handlebar, so I'm not going to have an issue with my clutch, I'm thinking. And I had and a free nut to spin, so I'm real happy with this right now. So now it's ready to put the new keeper or the new uh, tabs on here and the new bearing. I got an angular bearing right here. Or linear? Linear angular uh, linear bearing it's not a radial bearing it's it's meant to put thrust this direction because this side is thicker and this side is thinner so what happens is the balls that are in there are setting at an angle and so when you put pressure this way it's it's stronger and it still functions <laughs> and it functions really well it's not it's not like a radial bearing which isn't designed for side thrust. It's That's, it's meant to have all of its pressure on the radial edge, on the top and right. bottom or whatever, up and down, not in and out. It's not meant for that. This bearing isn't for that, but you get the idea. Yeah, because that's kind of like what... Because that's what's in it now is a bearing like this that's sealed. Oh, well, it's this size, but yeah. And that's what went bad with this clutch. And then it broke the... It broke the pull rod, that's the original the pull rod. It that's broke the it with all tridents. It's not just that somebody put the wrong thing in. That's factory. With the that's head. the factory so. bearing. This, they somebody figured this out later years. I don't know when or I don't know who. It's just this is one people recommend now. So I got it, and that's what we're going to put in. And uh, 
So. Yeah, so we're gonna work on taking this apart. We'll get to the point where we're ready to put that new bearing in, taking it out, and then we'll get this all buttoned up here. <clears throat> here, hopefully, real quick. So after doing a run out test a little bit ago, we got it all tore back apart now, and we're gonna work on the next step here. We're gonna replace the bearing in here, and then We'll be able to put it back together and get it ready to put on the bike. And we'll put all them in. Put all new uh, locking tabs on and tighten it all down. Get it ready to press the bearing out. almost there we go we'll get the other one and put it in now important we put this bearing in correctly this is the thrust side so the pull rod needs to go in and pull this way the reason that you got to be careful is because this side is non-thrust side and if you look see i can push that it, it's it's free this way. So if I put it in backwards and put it like that, it would just pull the center out of this thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it wouldn't even pull the clutch in. So just, I got to make bearing. sure that I put this in. It's got to go this way because the pull rod's got to lift this off. And it, so it's got to go this direction. All right. Let's go put it in. There we are. It's pointing the right way? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go put this clutch together. High melting. Because you don't want to foul the clutch. So you got to put a little bit of grease on each one of them? Yeah. Give each one of these. We're going to put a little, just a little taste. Of course, when I took it apart, there was no hint of ever having any grease on it. And it talks about this in the manual to put a little grease. Just, just rub a little. Just, just. But, uh, you know, does that stuff come off over time possibly? And that's why they didn't uh, have any? No. I mean, there's nothing to re-keep lubricating it while it's in there. Eventually nope. it would melt away or. Nope. Can't ever do it. Can't ever get it back. And you're also supposed to where the ring goes. Not gonna get so much to where it I'm just gonna Give it a taste. Something more than it ever had in a long time. Yeah. I mean, when we first were taking it apart, it's supposed to be a dry clutch and it had some residue in there, but it wasn't. That was from oil from the seals leaking. Yeah, it wasn't something like this, of course. Yeah. I got it. That's our mark, so we know where to line up with. Right? That one? Or no? No, this was the underside. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, well, depends upon how you want to look at it, I guess. Okay. Then I'll, then I'll 
all that excess off. I don't want it to end up on the clutch. The book talks about using NLGI high high melting point and this is 540 Fahrenheit uh, drop point or melt point and uh, it's made by Lucas. Lucas is a pretty good name and uh, so that's what I decided to use. I don't think this is gonna foul anything. If it does well I guess I'll find that out. <laughs> yeah. I was supposed to do. I'm just gonna touch that too. I'm just gonna touch this with my fingers with a little grease on it. I don't want so much on it so that when I pull the clutch in, it scrapes it all off into a big glob. Yeah. Like people put silicone on. Well, stuff. in doing this, it keeps it from being metal on metal. And right. It's also. Benefit also in there. Barely, barely anything. Yeah, there's that. Okay. Now, I did mark this. I put a mark there and I put a little punch mark right there. But what I found out later is when I turned this over. There was original red mark right here. I thought that was pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's really, spot. really close. And this is where I found my nice spot. So, and I'm going to keep that in line with my markings that I put on the wheel. There's one right here. So, and I got to have that in line with that. So, okay. All right, let's. Next step is to put a clutch in here. I gotta have the service tool. I gotta also put some grease in these splines. They say to lightly grease these splines. Now, originally, the clutch that I took out of this bike didn't have any yeah. grease on the splines. It was dry. It was all wore out anyway. And that could be part of the reason that it wore out is because it didn't have any grease. Now what I'm yeah. going to do here, this looks like a lot because of the teeth. Yeah, so this is, this splined area here is very important. It's got to, yeah, it's got to be able to move and slide. And you can't have too excess amount of free play and it can't. Be super tight also. Because according to the book, you were saying according to the book. It's it, supposed to be a snug fit with minimal play. And we've accomplished that with this clutch disc. Yes. We didn't have any luck with that, that new one. So Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over there on the hub. because, Or I could bring the hub over here because I'm going to have to take it off. But... Uh, Either way, yeah, I'll probably go get the hub. And, uh, gotta be careful not to touch the, the, uh, the disc, the actual yeah, the surface, disc, clutch disc. surface. So, yeah, we got the, the splined hub there all greased up too, as well. So, yeah. moving it back and forth. I can feel grease on it, but I don't see it much anymore. There is a little there, but I don't think I'll have to worry about it. A little excess here and there. It's kind of wet. That's all I wanted it to be. So, 
that's what this is. It's just wet. I gotta dry my hands again. So with the service <clears throat> tool, we have to we have the crown piece sitting down. We put the service tool here in here, and this helps centers the the clutch disc. Yes, and this part goes in. Line up my my divot marks and my divot mark. Remember, I greased this already. So there it is. Now I'm gonna bring. Here, line that up. Go. Got there my, go. got my mark and my little divot lined up with the marks here. All my marks are there. This is the best places I could fit it. Here's the mark here. I put an X there, so it's easy to see. And we're gonna set this baby up right now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put new plates, put the screws in it, because we're going to put this together for the last time this time. Because I know that it will release. At twenty two thousandths, and by twenty five, it's completely released. So with thirty thousandths pull, I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna have an easy working clutch. Yeah, let me uh, tighten them down in the. And in sequence there when we rotate around evenly, so we pull down evenly, which we talked about before in a different video, but it pulls the diaphragm in evenly that way. It doesn't bend stuff and whatever. Don't warp the cover. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Now we're ready to start tightening them down. So he's been going round and like I'm quarter just, a turn. No, I'm just taking the slack out of all of them. Okay. I haven't even started yet. Now with me, I start right up after my mark. And so. So you know where to stop, start and yeah. stop at. I'm going to do half a turn. Pretty easy with the T-handle. Yeah. This is not a good place to be using power tools. Yeah. I don't use a T handle very often, but this looks like it's made for this almost. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a major uh 
sequence of events that has to happen to, when doing a clutch on the Trident. I've I've came to realize with this whole segment here, the last couple of videos, and it's something. Um, <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it. It's really heavily engineered, and it's quite a quite a mechanical feat. And but I mean, it's it's like a clutch. It's like a car clutch going into a motorcycle. Which nothing wrong with that. It's just I don't know how to explain what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> you know, they could have probably picked a, a number of different kind of clutches to use. And, and why they picked this, I, you know, I don't know if anybody knows. But, you know, it does work. I think they thought the bike was going to have such, um, such power that the clutch that they had in the 650 at the time with the five plates would never hold up and it would slip and burn and so they even on the 750s when they came out well this came out in 69 there was no 750s yet. yeah that, yeah right so this was like your 650 tiger and your 650 bonneville uh, the 69 and the 70s so right okay <clears throat> and it might have just tore that clutch right up. I have no idea. Because you can't put one of them clutches in here to find out. No, it's been all uh, specially designed covers and case covers for all this. this okay. So I'm just going to bring these up to snug now at the end. Some of them are already there, so. Okay. I want to torque them so I get an even amount. Now this isn't a very big screw and inch pounds. Yep, inch pounds. And I am going to put it on seventy inch pounds. Start there. I want yeah. I want you to hold the clutch though. It'll want to turn. Okay. Now, I don't know how tight they're supposed to be. I couldn't find a torque spec for it. So, I did a little search on what the thickness of the bolt is. And with uh, this being a hardened bolt, that it, it be, it's between 60 and 80 inch pounds. So, I, I landed on 70. And it, it's going to be what it's going to be. Okay. And so, so now she's ready to go. She's ready to go in the bike. So the next step is going to be... we got to fold them up, of course. we got to fold them up. And we're going to um, 
we can test pull again. I guess I could have put the papers back in, but I know it's going to work here. So, and it should work just fine. So I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, the next step is then, yeah, we'll fold these up and then we're going to take the, and put the cush rubbers. We've got to replace all, all these cush rubbers in the, in the, uh, in cush the hub. Drive. In uh, the I cush think what drive. we'll do is, I think we've got a lot of footage here and this is going to be a long video, but um, I kind of want to shorten it up now, but I think what we'll do is we'll, to finish up the clutch segment of this whole thing, we're gonna get ready to put this in the bike. Can we put this in without having to put the? No, we got to do the. It's got to be together. We got to do the cush rubber. All right. Next. Well then, we probably should just do the cush drive in this group here, and then we'll come back and assemble it. So we'll move on to the cush drive here now. Watch where we're gonna leave it. I just got that together so I can. I can test pull if you want. I mean, what do you want? What are you doing here anyway? With I that? just put it together. Oh, okay. so it doesn't. So I got the pull rod in it, and it's I don't know. It's just done. Now we're gonna set this somewhere. Put the service tool away. We don't need it no more. And uh, next step is to put um, the cush rubbers in. Yeah, on the cush drive, <coughs> which we'll work on here in a minute. So. Well, this one is 62 thousandths. So work on the cush drive here. We're starting with this. Uh, yeah, it's the same. This about 61 thousandths. The shim here, or bearing. 61, it's the same. So it's not even war. I bought a new one because I didn't know. And uh, Well, the old one, the original one, looks like it's worn. But well, it's, it's not got some shiny spots, but it doesn't really... I don't know. I guess this one looks like it's made out of different stuff. I don't know. Hmm. This goes right in here. Yeah, well, it's brass. Well, I bought the new one, so I'll put the new one in. It fits tight, so that's cool. Well, anyway, here it is. You gotta take these apart. Of course, it's probably a different size socket. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Get the tools, and we'll get back this at is this. Five sixteenths. <laughs> now we got like the couple left here. <clears throat> One thing I'll point out is I put a divot right there and I put a black magic marker on it. That's where my other mark is that lines up with this one. And I also put a dot right in the middle of this rivet right there so that when I have the chain and everything and I'm going on, I can verify real easily. And uh, that's for best run out. Right, which is something you got to do. Yeah. So no, you can't just like replace the disc and put it all back together and you're good, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. All right, so moving this the spider. That's what you called it earlier. Yeah, this is a spider. I don't know why they call it that, but whatever. That's what right. they call it. The six-legged spider. So. so if you look at how these all go together, this all really tore up pretty bad go like this there's a picture in the book to in case the person needs it This might be real entertainment putting this together too. Yeah, we'll see here. Well, if it was anything like the the one in the 79 bottom though, we replaced them. 
Yeah. That was quite the deal. Probably the same kind of deal. I want to get something to set this up on. Um, so we're replacing the Cush Drive damper uh, rubbers. They go in a certain way, and then the final result when they're all in. So, anyways, this is how it's supposed to go in. The curves are towards the top, like it shows in the picture here. And that means that they would be set up like, like so, when they're sitting in there. And the gap, the piece that it goes onto, goes onto the spider piece, not onto the outer diameter uh, points. So, we're going to work on getting these in the rest of the way. It's going to take quite a bit, so... Um, yeah, because this these two first two here were kind of difficult just to give you an example But that's how they go and then we'll work our way around And there's no real easy way to do this because you can't use grease or oil Thinking that they would be easier way to put it in slicker, but that's not what you're supposed to do So make sure you don't do that So we got some in so far. It's really a pain in the butt um, There's a there is kind of a tool that to maybe hold this piece somehow and and you hooks into here somehow and it rotates it and you put all this pressure on it and it opens up this gap for it to go in because we are at the point to where we have just a few left here and see how small that hole is there i mean it's small. this is it's huge i mean we got a long ways to go <laughs> yeah so without this without a tool to Maybe to have the advantage to compress those. Yeah. So we're struggling here with this, but we've found out so far that to get them in as far as we've got so far, um, we put we start with the the bigger end, and then we use a a piece of like a screwdriver without with a flat piece on the end of it. it doesn't have smooth. any. Smooth. Yeah, smooth. And uh, we just like slide it in and ramp it in there. So we're trouble gonna... trouble is now you get to the other point. We got so much to squeeze yeah so we're gonna tinker with this some more and well we'll be done hopefully here with it so we were having a hard time getting it by hand so we made our own special tool so we took this old uh this old plate here it has the um the splined the splined piece that yeah this right here it has a splined piece there that comes through and we screwed it to this two by four here, clamped it to the table to hold it. And then we drilled a hole, our hole saw a hole in this piece one by four here or one by six or whatever. And then um, it went through here and then we got it together. So what we're gonna do is when we go to, and we screwed it down here and when we go to bend it or whatever, we can actually open it up. So we just need to move it enough to get them slid, slid in there. We don't need to get carried away. So let's go ahead and try to see if we can get this to work. Goes like this, right? Yep. Well, I think it's gonna take both people. So, all right, I'm gonna set up a tripod here, probably. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Tell me which way to. Let me ready. I don't want no wood chips in there. No. Okay. I want to go this way. All right. I just meant let me get the piece lined up like I'm supposed to have it. Um, like this, right? Yeah. yeah like okay. That. Yep. Okay, I got that one in. Okay. Which way were you going? It's going towards me, which is opening up this, this one. one. So I'll get this one next. And we'll open up that one next as well. Like this, right? Yeah, towards the spider part. Yep. yep. Okay. I don't know how long this will hold up. Cause <laughs> I know. It's not, it's, it's not exactly uh, 
the best scenario, but this will work. We only have to do this once. Okay, go some more. There it goes. Wow, it's working. All right, we got we got one more opening here. This direction. This millionaire spider goes this way, right? Yep. Come on, get in there. There it goes. Go the other way a little bit. Okay, I got okay. it. Go again. Okay, I got it. No. <laughs> this no. is actually working pretty good. What we had. Which, which way we got to go? This one. This is the yeah that. Just like that. Yeah, like that. Okay. Yep. The right way. Yep. There it goes. Okay. You get it? Yeah. Where's the other rubber? Right here, fell underneath. Oh, okay. Well, only one left. Woohoo! <laughs> goes this way. Yep. The table wants to move when I get to the point where okay, I can't I'm hold no more. Ready? Yep. No nope, other left. Oh, hold on. Hold it. Okay, I got it. All right. I wow. might have to, I might have to push a couple of them in, or this piece might just pull them all in. Looks like it was this way. Yeah, I think the book says. Well, yeah, this is the way the spider was on this. Well, that worked out pretty sweet. There we go. We got the plate on there, and we're going to pull this all together. But when this plate gets pulled down in there, and then we'll remove the hub off of here, of course, when we get to that point. Yeah, we don't have to snug it. We don't. Or the um, the cush drive unit off of here. Well, it worked out a lot better than what we were trying to do. <laughs> wow. And if we were going to do this more often, I suppose we better use a, make it out of metal or something. Make a real tool. Yeah. There you go. Good enough for now. Where's the drill? Over there. We got the plate down and we got the rubbers all smashed in there. And then we, uh, this isn't quite the same kind of bolt as on the clutch. Um, it doesn't have the markings on it. So this is probably grade five or something. So we're probably going to go with like, well, I don't know, what do you think? 60 inch pounds? 50 yeah, inch pounds? 60. And then we're working on also lining up the a flat so we can fold these up. Yep. So we got a couple there we got to fix up to make them flat. But um, there we go. It was all there was to it, I guess. <laughs> we're about ready to put this all together. So we got the thing all assembled here. We got the 
clutch ready to go. We got the cushion unit ready to go and buttoned together here. We got it lined up and everything. So our next step was if board. If you want to see the lineup. Oh, well, I guess we could ver just verify it, but. There's a, there's a black in a, in a, in a spot that I put. You, get, you see the, the indent that I put in it? Yeah. Okay. And I, and I put one in there too. If you look in close next to the threads, you see I put a center punch mark on it. And I black my magic marker did. And I also put a pin right there. Yep. So oh, that one round part yep. right there. So I line these up. There's a dot, there's a dot, and there's the dot. So that's the, that's the we got best our... that's the best run out. So All right, so we're gonna pretty much come to an end here in this segment because the next group of stuff when we go to put this in the bike and put the covers on and everything is gonna be a we'll be assembling. Yeah, we'll be assembling and it's kind of like a long process as well. Otherwise this video would probably be about two hours long. So we'll see you again soon and hope you enjoyed everything here. And until next time.